Hi guy, welcome to my top five gaming handhelds video. Uh, now again, this is a, another one which is all down to personal choice. This is what stands out in my mind and what's my favourite and so on. Uh, this is a very tough one to do because there's well, there's been there hasn't really been a lot of handhelds over the years, big ones in 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 that sense. But these are the ones that really stand out to me, which I've, I've really got along with over the years. So. Well, Going from, from my, uh, not least favourite, but number five, <laughs> uh, would be the, very odd one, but the Neo Geo Pocket Colour. Now I remember seeing this back in the day in game, uh, it launched around the time of the, I think it was the Game Boy Colour, uh, and, and you know, comparing them like to like, it, it, the backlight thing was a massive, massive problem at the time but I think batteries just weren't good enough or, or you know to support the lights at the time but to play the NGPC you, you had to like sit with it like, like you know you have cut a, a slight angle to the sun but not enough to get the reflection but you could never really see it but even playing it to this day you struggle with it you can get uh, side lights and things for it but even these things on eBay now cost like 45 50 quid because it just wasn't a big seller so there's not a lot of them about but you can cheat a bit I believe with some Game Boy uh, uh, lights to plug onto the side but yeah yeah very very expensive system at times to get into but there wasn't that many games for it but the games that come out for it some of the favorite ones are like uh, Buy and Motor, Unitron <laughs> I can't remember, sorry, that was like a Pokemon style one with robots collecting, very very odd. Loads of RPGs, uh, the Capcom or, or whatever the card, card fighters clash, I was absolutely, I played that to death as well, that was an amazing, amazing card game, it, it still holds up to this day. I mean, I, I, will play, I always play it now on emulation just because I've tried going back a few times and I've always had this thing I want to get a collection of them because there's not that many games for it and there's only a few mega expensive ones but the problem is just actually playing on the actual system. I know you can get them, uh, you can mod them to some degree to get a light put in but I've, I've not got the skill to do that. I'd have to pay someone to do it and it's very hit and miss where you can find someone to do it and then it always costs a fortune so I've never had the opportunity so I always tend to play it on something like the, the JXD because you know a full lit up screen looks amazing but the games where it's at absolutely awesome and I say I can remember it at game at the time uh, things like the, the Pac-Man controller where you know, it had a little bit of stick on joystick which sat over. The controller was absolutely amazing. It was the best handle, it still is to this day with that. But the way the, the D pad worked and the buttons were just glorious. It was almost like a mini arcade. It was weird, absolutely weird, but yeah. Anyway, uh, number four, uh, I suppose this, this should come as no surprise from your list, but it's the Atari Lynx. I mean, uh, on and off I've tried collecting these over the years, I did it about two years ago and got about 40 games out of like a, whatever it is, maybe 70 or 100, I forget. But uh, I got a big chunk into the library and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the problem is I had a, a bad run in with a couple of Lynxes and you can actually get them modded now so someone will fit an LCD screen for like 60 to 70 quid. I'm actually tempted to go back to it, I had a lot of fun with it, the games were always awesome. Uh, I think you can get flashcards for it, I'm not sure, but again, it, it, it's one of them ones where I don't mind getting the games for it. They look awesome on the shelf, uh, They're not mostly they're not too expensive, but a really, really good console. Uh, never had one back in the day, I know somebody who did, it got, cost an arm and a leg even back then. Uh, no surprise, it just it wasn't Game Boy levels of, of success, but again, I think that was mainly down to the price, but you know, it... it, it it was like it would have been like having a Mega Drive as a handheld at the time compared to somebody having a, a Master System. It was the, the difference between the Game Boy and the entire length was just incredible. But you know, Game Boy just got the traction because of its cheap price and the Planetful games. It just got in there first. But you know what could have been. Anyway, uh, next one, number three. This is a very tough one to pick out because uh, obviously it's going to be a Nintendo one because you know they are the king of handhelds. I'm afraid. But uh, out of all the Game Boy range, the one that really, really stood out to me, and, and, and I know it's not got the be well, the, the biggest screen, uh, but on purpose, and it's the Game Boy uh, G or the GBA Micro. It might be Game Boy Micro, the really little, little, tiny one. I remember, you know, it's like this big. It's absolutely fantastic. With a little three-inch screen on it, and it's razor-sharp screen. It's one of the best screens they did at the time. 
Uh, and if you got like a flash car and just stuck a lot of ROMs in it, you could just, I, I used to take that, sorry, I used to take that into work and, you know, sneak off places. And I was obsessed with it at the time. Uh, it was like, you know, it was perfect. And you could just literally tuck it in your pocket. It was nothing. It was probably about as big as a, a, a big key ring. I don't know. Absolutely fantastic machine, and then you could get all the different face plates for it and replacement stuff and change the design. It was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking myself, I'm not even going to buy another one now, I'm talking myself back into it, but it was an awesome system. Um, I'd, sorry, I'd, I never got one back in the day, I only got one a few years later, and I think out of all the Game Boys, I had the most fun with it, it, it was my favourite one. Uh, anyway, on to number two. Uh, this is going to sound like an odd one, but uh, uh, it's the PlayStation Vita. Uh, I know it's dead today. Uh, Sony's pretty much given up the ghost on the first party stuff, and there's not that much third party. But with the fact it's got access to the PlayStation Network Store, whatever, with the back catalogue of PS1 games and all the PSP games and stuff, you can build a massive, massive library very, very easily. And they're all good classic games. And some of the recent ones like a Persona 4 on it, I mean I must have lost about 250 hours of my life playing that. And I can only play that really, at, but I can't I never take something like that to work, but you know, I can only really play it for a couple of hours or two before I went to bed. It's not something I play at any other time. And God, the amount of time I played on that, just that one game, but all the other games, I think um, that RC, Motor Storm, stuff like that. Absolute, absolutely fantastic system, and I was able to play some of the Final Fantasies on it when uh, they came out as uh, backloads. Because uh, 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 I'm not sure. I think it emulates. Sorry, it emulates the the, the the PS1 games. Absolutely fantastic system. Never, you know, the screen. They redid a newer one to cheapen the cost, but they changed the quality of the screen. And it's not very good. So if you can, if you want one, go for the original. But uh, yeah, absolutely gorgeous system. Such a joy to use. I would always worry that Sony might pull the plug one day and you won't be able to get back to the store. Uh, but my advice to you there is just to load everything onto memory cards, even if you've got a spare one stashed away somewhere. Because most of the games are only like a couple of gig and you can get like a 32 and 64 gig card. Sadly, Sony control the market for that and screw people on the price of them. They're really, really expensive. I, don't, I still don't think you can get third party ones because of the technology they use which is so you're stuck paying daft prices but that's up to you guys anyway <laughs> anyway finally uh, number one should no come with no surprise because really, I've done a full review on the system before uh, but it has to be the uh, uh, JXD S 7800 B now this really is one of my all-time favorite game systems and yes I know it's an Android system and you can't put original games in it or anything like that but you can go on the store and the internet and stuff it's like it's, you know it's basically it's a tablet with decent uh, analog sticks on it d-pad and all the buttons and R, R button uh, L and R buttons on top and, you know you can play PlayStation stuff on it Dreamcast even some GameCube I believe uh, and, it, and you know you can emulate everything on it and the screen is amazing to touch. It's got a HDMI out, so you can plug it into a TV if you want. Uh, I mean, I've absolutely, I've, I've still got one knocking around. I, I love it to death. I take it everywhere with me. Because there's nothing like if you're playing an RPG, is playing it on that because you literally you put it in sleep mode. It literally saves it. Or you turn it off. You know, the instant save with everything. It's not like some of the older systems where if you don't save, you bug it off. You put it in sleep mode. It's only until the battery runs out. That's just technology moving on. But uh, yeah, as a console, it's, it's absolutely as a handheld. Sorry, it's absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend it. Now there's a lot more coming out these days. Like the uh, uh, I think Funstock are doing a, a newer range now of the. J, J, JXs or something, or the new Blaze handhelds, which are a bit better spec-wise, and, uh, and and they've got a better processor in. But again, for the ease of use, the ease of use for the JXD and the fact that you can get hacked firmware for it now, so it runs even faster, you've got nothing to hold back on. Uh, one of the big, best things I did on it, uh, and recently was was playing through Shenmue on it. You know, and it just the thought. I mean, just imagine that. You know. 10 or 15 years ago, having Shenmue in your pocket, being able to take it anyway, this was a big, full, big title out on for TVs and stuff, and you, you've got it in your pocket. What can I say? <laughs> anyway, uh, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm sure some of you probably disagree with this. It's a tough one to do because there's. There has been a lot of handheld, but there's mainly, it's mostly Nintendo. It's a really tough thing to choose from, but. 
by all means, post in the comments below. Let me know what your favourite was, or if you disagree with me even. And uh, we should take it from there. See you next time, guys.